What's going on guys? In this tutorial today we're going to be covering simple input within libgdx. It's going to be nothing too crazy, we're just going to go over two methods about capturing input within libgdx. Um, so let's first off start it with the way I prefer. Um, it's nothing, again, too complex or anything like that. You're just going to go and right after your class name you're just going to go and extend the input adapter. Okay. Once you've extended the input adapter and you've imported it, you can then go ahead and you can start overriding some methods. So, let's see. Uh, one cool way to get um, methods from a superclass or a, or whatever, um, you can go right click and you can say source, 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 override implement methods. All right, and then you have all these awesome methods that you can implement: um, key down, key typed, key up, mouse move scrolled, touch down, touch drag, touch up. These are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, key down is going to be when you actually press the key down, and key up is when that key goes up. Um, and then there's no, um, I, I don't know how to call it, like key, key is down, like, uh, for example, key down only gets called once, right? If you want to keep on calling it multiple times, then you have to do that within the render method. Um, there's a specific uh, method for that within the Java um, way of doing input, but for libgdx, just go ahead and do it in the render method. Um, so now we also have touchdown. That's when you actually touch the um, to click the screen, and then touch up is when you click off, like you let go of the left mouse button or whatever. You you guys get this. This is pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to go and play around with uh, key down for the keyboard, um, scrolled, and let's go ahead and touch down. Okay. Now we have this. I always hate the screen stuff, so go and get rid of it. And then for each of these, you want to go ahead and return true. So that way in your code, you can go and check if one of these was actually activated. Da, 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 da. All right. Um. So let's go ahead and see what these arguments mean. The key code—that's the actual code for what you're pressing, for what button you're pressing on the keyboard. You can go ahead and do a switch in case for the key key code, and then you can say if this one, if, in the case that the spacebar was pushed, then do this. Um. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory there, and then. In the touchdown method, you have screen X, which is the X coordinate of wherever you clicked or touched, if in the case of mobile application. Y is the Y coordinate. Pointer, um, when it comes to pointer, it's a little bit more advanced because, as you know, a lot of phones today are able to have um, uh, capacitative touch or something like that, where you can have more than one finger on the screen at one time. So the first finger you put down is pointer equals zero, the second finger is pointer equals one. Uh, and then so on and so on. So that's really for um, more than one finger at a time on your screen. Um, button you don't really need to worry about. And then for this one in the scrolled method, if you scroll up, then it's going to equal a negative one. If you scroll down, then it's going to be a positive one. All right. So let's go ahead and start showing you guys how this works. Just that it proving to you how this works and how you can use it to your advantage or whatever. So let's go ahead and make a switch for the key code. Okay. And then in the case of keys dot space, then we can go ahead and say system dot out dot print line and space break. And in the case of keys dot back backspace, you can go ahead and say system dot out dot print line backspace. I'm not necessarily doing anything too advanced here, just showing you the system dot out dot print line way of doing it, just just to keep it basic, nothing too advanced, showing you how to get input within libgdx. Um, in the touchdown method, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to say system 
dot out dot print line. Uh, let's go ahead and say click semicolon plus screen X. Um, yeah, plus what else? Oh, that shouldn't be a comma there. Uh, comma space plus screen Y. Yeah, that's kind of what we want to worry about there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then in the scrolled, we're just going to show you the values that come about when you scroll. So we're going to say scrolled. And then, aha, uh -huh. one second, scrolled, and then we're going to go and add the amount, which is either a positive one or a negative one. Um, yeah, yeah, this is going to fully explain the first method of doing this. And then before I forget, um, whenever you extend the input adapter, you always want to go within your create method and you want to say gdx.input.set input processor this. So okay, uh, as you can see the coding here, it makes logical sense, it's very easy, nothing too complex. The one that you want to be worried about mostly is the touchdown method. Uh, and the reason for that is because on a mobile application, you don't really have a keyboard or a mouse, so touchdown is really your main mode of input. I mean you do have a keyboard but you're not really going to be using that in a game that much. So let's go ahead and run this so that we can go ahead and prove what each thing does. So we're going to click and show you the coordinates of that. That's 2519, that's 447, 297. Um, ah, Dan, how to explain this. Um, I know when we covered the orthographic camera, the grid uh, had the origin right at zero zero. I mean, right in the center of the screen. So zero zero was like right here, um, with the Android SDK, whatever, and and really just this too. It's your zero zero is like right here. So yeah, just know that. And then there's that. There's that. Okay, so let's press the space bar. Space, 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 space. As you can see in the console, it's just writing space. Now backspace. And now let's go ahead and scroll up. Scrolling up gives us a negative one. Scrolling down gives us a positive one. Okay, so we have the way of getting a put down that I like. Um, now let's go ahead and get rid of that, everything that we just did. If you're following along, that is. And that, and this. Okay, so we're back to square one with everything. So. There's also another way of uh, getting input that's a little bit shorter, but at the same point, it um, it's it's not as simple to think about, I guess. See, I just like doing the other way because it's although the code might be a little bit longer, it's much simpler to think about. Um, but anyways, what you're gonna do with the other method is you're just gonna go gdx .input. Uh, and then you have all these right here. You have the accelerometer, you have um, is key pressed, which is the one that we're going to be working with, is button pressed, is touched, um, so that's if you're clicking it. So you, you have everything that you did over there. Um, but in this case, what we have is uh, it being called every time in the render method, so just you know, be, uh, be aware of that. Every time in the render method, then it's going to call this once too. So, for example, if we're call if we're pressing the space bar and we press the space bar for a second long, then it's gonna take take that input sixty times because that's usually how many frames are in a second. So let's go ahead and show that. So uh, let's go if gdx dot input dot is key pressed is the one that we're gonna work with. And then again you're just gonna go keys dot um, space there we go and then you can do whatever you want now again this is going to be called once every frame so it's going to print out space quite a bit of times space 
Okay, and let's just show how this is going to work. Alright, I'm not pricing space yet, and I will in 3, 2, 1. Boom. So as you can see, it prints out a ton of lines of space. So um, these are the two different methods of input within libgdx. So you can just go ahead and use whatever is easiest for you. Um, you know, it's it's just really a personal thing. That's one of the things with code is that there's so many ways to do things. So it's really up to you what you find most efficient and what you're comfortable with. So I hope you learned something with this video and you can make your games awesome. So I'm going to also be making an advanced version of this tutorial uh, where we'll be working with things like pointers um, and just more methods. Uh, that you might encounter if you're m making a really crazy game with libgdx. So please subscribe for more content like this about libgdx and other coding videos, and thank you.